All right, appraisers, this is Brandon with Choice Valuation, and in this Spark Spotlight video, I'm going to be showing you how to get the data from Spark into your ClickForms report. Now, first, I'm going to show you that basically there's three sides to Spark. So I'm on the cost data side, and so you can see I've done the cost approach for my subject, and I've also got my uh, potential comps over here that I used for site extraction. And so that's what this is, and that's the site value tool, which is, I'll, I'll get into that in different videos. But so I've got the cost data side done. I've also got the grid side, and that's this side here. That part is done. And I've also got the 1004MC side, and that part is filled out right here. And so essentially, when you hit export in Spark to send your data over into ClickForms, whatever of these sides of Spark you filled out, that's what's going to send over. So I've got all three sides filled out in Spark. So that means when I hit export, it's going to send out over all the data from all three sides into my ClickForms report. If you've only done the cost approach or you only did the grid, then when you hit export, it's only going to send that data over. All right, so now essentially what you do is you hit export when you're ready. And then these are the some settings you can go in here and check as far as how Spark is going to load data into your report. I encourage you the first time you use it to test it out on a sample file. Don't use it on a real report. And just use the default settings and see if you like it. And if you don't like it, then you can go and kind of tweak things from, from there. But most appraisers do like how it is by default. So, okay, so I'm going to show you one more time. So you hit export, and then you choose your option down here. Do you want to load this data into your report, or do you want it just the data for your work file? So this video is just to show you how to get the data into your ClickForms report. So you, we're going to choose report data. And now the last option we have to choose is whether you want to merge the data into your report or you want to replace the data in your report. And replace just means, and by the way, it's all defined right here, but replace means regardless of what's in your report, Spark is going to overwrite that data in your report. So if you've already got comps in your report, if you've got a 1004 MC in your report, the cost approach, when you hit replace, Spark is going to overwrite all of that. Now merge, what that means is essentially any place where you have data already in your report, Spark will not be allowed to load data into that field of your report. ClickForms will disallow it or prevent it from loading that data in. So if you start out reports with templates, like um, here, let's look at this for example. So this is a, t a sample template. So if you start off reports like this, where it's mostly blank, but you've got a few lines filled in, and you know maybe you have a little bit filled in up here, then um, like you can see here. So for example, I have age blank, but I have price as zero. Um, so what that means is if I use the merge option, Spark is going to be able to fill in these three fields, but it will not be allowed to fill in these three fields because there's already data in there. And the same with the checkboxes. So you just want to be careful about that. So I'm going to show you how it works here. So, um, so let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to go back to Spark. So one more time, I'm going to show you. You start off by hitting export, then you hit report data because you want to load this into a report. Then I'm going to choose merge. And now this process right here takes right around 20 seconds. And keep in mind, I chose merge, so Spark will not be allowed to overwrite these fields or those other, these other three right here. So let's get into it. So let's give it maybe, hopefully about 10 more seconds here and we should be ready to go. Okay, so that part's done now. All right, so now essentially it gave us this file. Now. Your internet browser might look a little bit differently. I use Google Chrome and it downloads the, and puts the file right here. Either way though, no matter what browser you use, you just want to make sure and save the file. If, it, if your browser gives you an option to open or save it, you want to choose save. And almost every browser, unless you've changed the setting yourself, it's going to download this file to your downloads folder of your computer. And that's important and I'll show you why. Okay, so let's go into ClickForms now. So all we did was we exported and Spark downloaded this file to our computer. So once that process is done, you go to ClickForms. And now this part you want to be careful about because it is different than other data importing tools. So in other tools, when you load data into ClickForms, you have to close your report first, then load the data in, and then open it. But in Spark, you just want to make sure that whatever report you're loading into, that's the report that's loaded and open in ClickForm. So this is the report I want to load into. And so now what I do is I click File and then Import. Import from, and I want to import from a ClickForms text file. So I click that. And then right here, I choose the file that I'm going to load into. Now the file that I want to use is in my Downloads folder. So you want to make sure and come over here and click on Downloads. and 
what what your computer is going to do, and it's most likely Windows is going to do, is it's going to load that file in, and every time you download a file from Spark, it's going to call it Click Forms, and it's going to add on a number. And we're actually considering updating this so when you download the file to your computer, Spark will name it by the address of your subject. Um, so, but right now, it's obviously not doing that. But you, so in the future, this might look different. It might actually have the address of your subject as the name of the file. So I'm going to choose the most recent one, which is this one. And then you hit Open. And now it's starting the process. So this part probably takes another 15, 20 seconds or so, depending on how many comps you have and how much data you're loading in. Now I'm loading in a whole bunch of properties. This is like 12 comps. I've got some charts loading in and all that jazz. All right, and so now it's done. So I can go back up here. I can see it loaded in some subject information. I've got, um, now here's the part I wanted to show you. So I've got my low, high, and predominant age, and it did put those in. However, it did not put these in, and it also didn't do the boxes correctly because I already had these boxes checked. And if you remember, I chose the merge option, which means Spark will not be allowed to overwrite any time there's already data in there. So that's what it looks like. And so you just want to be careful. If you use the merge option, you want to clear out any fields where you have data that you want Spark to overwrite. And then here's what the grid looks like. So I've got the grid pretty much filled out at the top of page two numbers. Um, and I've got, that's all looking like the way I want it to look. And I've got my prior transfer history. Now, by default, the way Spark handles your transfer history is it loads the transfer history under your grid like this, but it does not load any information here by default. You, if you want Spark 2, you can by changing a checkbox. But what it does by default is it loads in a prior transfer history addenda. So you basically have all relevant transfers. So for my subject, it's all transfers in the past three years are loaded in right here. Now, my effective date was 2017, which is why you have these three transfers showing up. And then also the same for your comps. It's loading in any transfers in the past 12 months for your comps. If there was more than one, just like with the subject, it would load in those extra as well. And that's how that works. And then because I also did the 1004MC, I'm going to have some charts in here. So let me show you that. So I've got my charts from Spark loaded in here. And, and there's several. You just you load as many or as few or none if you want to in there. And I've got my extra comps loaded in. I loaded in, I think, 10 or 11 comps. Let's check it out. I had to load in 11 comps. And um, that's pretty much it for what we – oh, I didn't show you the – cost approach. So here's the cost approach here filled out. Um, now it the template already had something in here, so it did not overwrite that. So let's just go ahead and show you. And I know this video is getting long, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the other option. So instead, when you're in Spark, you can hit export and then choose report data and choose replace. Now when I choose replace, what you're going to notice is, let me go up to here. You're going to notice now these fields that are zeros will be filled out correctly. The check boxes should be filled out correctly. And um, and then also the cost approach, which we had set at, um, which ha had this in here. It should say dwelling cost, because that's the source that Spark uses. But we'll see here in a moment. Um, and and also, this comment here is going to change as well. So it's going to, because it's going to get rid of those, because we chose replace. So let me show you what that looks like. So now Spark is done. It downloaded that file here. So that's called ClickForm 6. So now we can go back into ClickForms, and I can choose File, Import, ClickForms Text File. And now I'm going to choose the ClickForm 6, which is the one we just got, and hit Open. And let's give that a second to do its thing. But you should see this automatically correct itself. And there it goes. You can see that change to Dwelling Cost. The comment in here changed because I used Spark to help me with the site value. So that's all updated. Let's let it finish its thing, and then we'll I'll show you the page one information. And it's also this box which you can't which you can see now. It's asking me if I want to overwrite the um, the chart, the charts that were already in there. Okay. Well, it's all, there we go. Now it's done. So now I can go back to page one, and you can see that the checkboxes are now correct based on what I how I checked them in Spark. 
and it correctly filled this out. So that's just showing you the two differences, or the difference between merge and replace using uh, Spark and ClickForms together. So that's how it works. Essentially, what you need to know is that you need to have your report open that you want to load into. You go into Spark, you hit Export, Report Data, and then either Merge or Replace. And then Spark is going to download a file to your computer. And then all you do at that point is you're in, you go to ClickForms, you choose File, Import, and you choose your ClickForms text file, which is what Spark downloads to your computer. And by default, that's going to be in your Downloads folder, unless, which is this right here, unless you specifically tell your browser to download it to some other location, which you'll probably know in that case. But by default, it will download it to your Downloads folder. And that's it. So you just click Downloads, you find the file, and you hit Open. And like I said, but I'll say it one last time just in case, most likely we're going to change the names of these files so that they're the address of your subject property. If there is no address, we'll either put no subject, or I'm sorry, if there is no subject, we'll just say no subject, or we might just leave it so it says click form still. Uh, okay, that's it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And I'm really sorry this got long. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. And one more thing. I know I've already just said this was long, but one more thing I wanted to show you is when you're in Spark, if you have any questions, you just want to get a hold of us, feel free to give us a call and we're happy to walk you through it or answer any questions or even help you set it up and customize it so things are going into your report the way you want. You just click this gear icon anytime you're in Spark and then you click contact us and you'll be taken to this page where you've got our phone number and our email right here and we'll help you out quickly. All right. Thanks everybody for watching.